Hey, on. You're looking at live pictures of mission control at the Johnson Space Center. That's where they're spearheading the effort to lasso in a four and a half ton communication satellite. It's the third attempt for shuttle Endeavour astronauts. The previous two tries have failed. The unusual thing about today's walk is that it's the first time three astronauts are walking in space at the same time. Well, today's mission is one of the most difficult and dangerous ever undertaken by shuttle astronauts. Their lives are on the line should there be a mistake in outer space. And here's a look at how the astronauts are going to try and capture that satellite that is floating aimlessly above the Earth. Astronauts Thomas Akers, Richard Hybe, and Pierre Thewitt suited up this afternoon knowing that their lives are on the line. Trying to catch a spinning satellite in space presents innumerable risks. If a spacesuit is punctured, it could be fatal. The plan calls for shuttle commander Daniel Brandenstein to maneuver the Endeavour under the Intelsat satellite. The three astronauts will then take up positions around the satellite, and on the count of three, they will reach out and try to stop its spin through space. This all was rehearsed in an underwater tank yesterday at NASA. The intent is for the crew members uh, not to actually grab the satellite, but to slowly uh, uh, position their hands near the solar drum positioners, which are on the outside ring of the satellite, and uh, slowly induce uh, a dampening rate on the satellite until they get the rotation completely stopped. Once the satellite is stopped, two of the astronauts will hold it steady while Pierre Thewitt tries once again to attach the capture bar. The capture bar will then pull the satellite to the shuttle's cargo bay. The satellite will be positioned on a new booster engine. And later tonight, the $157 million Intelsat satellite will be fired into its proper orbit. The prestige of NASA is on the line in this $93 million satellite rescue mission and the future of the shuttle program could ride on how well three astronauts can wrestle a satellite. In Washington, I'm Jack Clorty. And now to fill us in with a little background on the shuttle mission, Mark Trotter, the planetarium curator at the Nature and Science Center, joins us. Good evening, Mr. Trotter. Thank you for joining us. Um, I guess two things. One, the uh, spacecraft has had some problem maneuvering into position to grab hold of the satellite. And of course, we all know the problems that the astronauts have experienced trying to hook up with this uh, the tow bar to the satellite. Why? Well, basically, they had a little navigation problem determining the exact position of the shuttle. And they have to know exactly where the shuttle is and where the satellite is so they can maneuver correctly. It might seem like a small matter, but uh, any collision between the shuttle and the satellite could uh, not only damage the satellite, but damage the shuttle tiles, which protect the shuttle during reentry. Uh, they've also just had problems with that this satellite was not designed to be retrieved by the space shuttle. Uh, that is what the capture bar is all about, attaching it to there, to the satellite, and then the space shuttle's remote manipulator arm can attach to it and pull it back in. Uh, satellites like the uh, Hubble Space Telescope are already designed for this, and this is just something they didn't design into this satellite. Mm -hmm. We've heard so much about this three-person spacewalk. Why is this so significant? Well, uh, originally the shuttle was designed only for two astronauts to perform an EVA at a time. Uh, they simply need literally the human power out in space to grab a hold of this satellite. Uh, the uh, spacesuit is rather bulky, and uh, so they've been inside the uh, airlock for a good while now, and once uh, they are out, outside, it should not be a problem. However, if there is an emergency, they all three need to come back into the shuttle at the same time. That is not an easy thing. In fact, the Soviet Union, the very first human spacewalk, almost ended where the astronaut could, get, could not get back into his capsule after the spacewalk because of the low pressure in space, the uh, spacesuit inflates to a degree and actually becomes a little bit larger. Uh, it's uh, a little bit trying to like repack your suitcase after, on, after you're on a vacation. You can't <laughs> get it all back together and uh, in space that's a serious problem. Yeah. Aside from the, uh, the danger of these, uh, these three people trying to be out there at the same time, we're talking about the monumental cost. What is, what is at stake for NASA if this, uh, if this project doesn't work? Well, it's, it is a problem. Uh, this is the sort of thing that NASA is trying to put forth, that there is a need for man in space Excellent. to do work like this. Uh, a, a robot obviously could not do this by itself. Uh, I'm confident they will accomplish this. Uh, this is the sort of thing we need to do to be able to go in the future of space, to build space stations, to eventually explore the, the planet Mars and the other planets in our solar system. All right, well, let's hope they're successful this time out. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. That's Mark Trotter from the Louisiana Nature and Science Center. Well, another new celebrating.
three astronauts have now snagged a communication satellite. Let's do it. The historic but dangerous spacewalk paid off. Three crewmen reached out and grabbed the four-and-a-half-ton spacecraft. The smallest accident could have been fatal. Even a small tear in a spacesuit would have brought instant death. A booster rocket is being attached to the satellite. It'll be launched into proper orbit Thursday. Wow. Hollywood could not have made that any more exciting. Sure could not. Oh.